Hello, 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 beautiful soul. I am super excited about today's solo episode because I get asked so many questions about this topic. So let's talk about money, baby. The thing is that if we like it or not, we come to the point in our lives when we feel like there is not enough money. We are coming from a place of scarcity. And the one thing that I was sharing with one-on-one uh, clients of mine is that very often we are treating money as the booty call. And usually when I say this to my girls, they are like smiling and there's like a little giggle. Well, the thing is, it's true. I've been there. I've been there when I was treating my money as a booty call. Now I need you. Now I don't need you. Where are you? Um, why I don't have enough of you? And then I wouldn't be checking my bank account. I wouldn't be checking my credit cards. I would be ignoring money. And then I would be wondering, like, when is, why is it not there as much as I want? And the thing is that when I heard in the past the, you know, the saying that money, it's just the energy, I'm like, well, I don't get it. I, like, how do I imagine money as an energy? Like, how do I, like, I wanted to see it as something tangible. So I started to imagine the relationship with money. I started to ask myself, how would like I be treated? Do I want to be treated like someone who is not trustworthy, somebody who is needed but not wanted, or the other way around? Like, what is really my relationship with money? Because if you are on your personal development journey, and it doesn't matter if you're on it, if you're just starting today, and if you are, welcome. <laughs> it's going to be a roller coaster. But no matter how many years you're on this journey, we get to realize that relationships are truly everything. And one of the things that I learned, it's like, I get to treat others how I want to be treated. So you cannot expect money to be always there for you when you are not treating it with respect and love and admiration when you are treating it like now i want you now i need you you come here then i'm going to be ignoring you for a month because i'm not going to be checking my account i'm not going to be checking on how are you doing and so you really get to check in with yourself and like i mentioned it doesn't matter how long you're on this personal development journey i bet that you heard you know the exercises about how how like how did you listen how did you hear what were the stories you heard when you were growing up like money don't grow on the trees or money are the root of the all evil or there is never enough money or you get to like work really hard to get money. Listen, that's how I grew up. We never talk about the money. And when people had money back in Czech Republic, they were not good people. They stole from other people, you know, communism and all these things. And so I believe that good people cannot make good money because they're too good and the bad people will take it away from them. And that I always have to be doing things like people pleasing and working really hard. So I deserve to have money. What are the stories that you heard when you were growing up? Like really write it down and go even one layer deeper. Why did you believe these stories? Because I realized that Okay, I wrote down the stories that I heard when I was growing up. What did I notice from my parents, my grandparents, my family, my friends? What, what was going on throughout my life when I was growing up? And then I realized it goes even deeper. Why would I believe that I always have to be doing things? Why would I believe that I have to be buying love? 
because when I moved from a, a city, big city, to small town with my parents when I, you know, was going to the elementary school, the thing is that the kids they didn't like me, they bullied me, and that I, I had to be. I was fighting with the girls, you know, and I was always like trying to be like pleasing everybody so i would be like bringing chocolates from home and toys from home to give it to the kids so that's where i started to believe that you are not deserving just because you are you have to be doing things so when i was looking at all of these things and stories that i have created i also realized that one thing that I created, a story that I created for myself is that as woman, I have to be independent. I have to be making more money than men because if not, I am not seeing as valuable in their eyes. And this is something that I realized because like, I don't want to say like I was an accident, but first my mom was dating my dad for two years. Then they had a first encounter and here I am. So that made me believe that I was an accident, that I shouldn't be here. And my mom divorced my dad when I was two years old. So I thought that well, I must be like not good enough if even like my biological father leaves me. Then when I was 18, I ran away from home because like my stepfather was abusive mentally and physically, and he was cheating on my mom with her coworker, which I find out on his phone through the text messages. And I didn't tell my mom because I thought like, well, she wasn't doing enough money. He didn't value her. He was always like, like diminishing her and always telling her she's not smart enough and good enough and so they divorce and then my grandfather he divorced my grandma who is a complete angel and left because she was too good you know she was too good too sweet and he left her for a lover when they were like over 50 years old like who is divorcing you know when you're always almost in the 60s for a lover so I created the story that I get to be independent and paying for everything and everybody so nobody leaves me. This is something that I discovered recently being on my personal development journey for, you know, over eight years now and investing in my mentors and coaches. This is something that I learned with my mentor recently. So not only write down the stories, what you believe about the money, but also go deeper. Really be curious about it, not just dumping it down on the paper, but what is the belief behind it that really led you to be taking the actions that you are taking to really create a relationship with money that it's mutual beneficial? You get to first see where your unhealthy relationship with money started. And instead of really judging yourself for everything you have done in the past, it really doesn't matter. You are not able to change the past, but you can always see where you want to be and how you want to be living your life from the moment now on. So not only write down your stories, but also what do you want your relationship with money to be? How do you want to feel? Do you want to feel excited? Do you want to feel trusting? Do you want to feel, you know, like the love and trust and admiration and freedom and knowing that it's mutually beneficial? What I started to do every single weekend, every Sunday with my love, we have a money date. And it's a time that we turn off everything. We, it's, it's really like a date. I wear something nice, so I'm feeling really good. And we do candles, we do essential oils, we do um, like really like nice clothes. And we sit down with the money. We have a journal. And first we write appreciation to the money for that week. 
And when I wrote down first the letter of appreciation, I also wrote it as partially forgiving letter. I told Money, I'm so sorry that I've been really ignoring her. Because for me, Money, it's 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 like a babe. Like it's a beautiful babe. I I see her like a golden angel, you know, like all gold, and she's like so warm and so loving. Now I like I'm a visual person, so I wanted to visualize her. I even find like a, on a Pinterest, like a, a beautiful golden angel uh, picture and I saved it for my money dates. And um, I wrote her appreciation letter. I'm so grateful that she's always by my side, even when I was ignoring her and for really being so patient with me. And I apologize for ignoring her for so long and being needy and being nasty to her when I didn't have enough of her and having the scarcity of like having scarcity when paying my bills because I'm like, well, I love receiving, but I don't love letting you go. And I put it all on the paper. And then the next step, what I did, and I do every single week in my money date, it's, it's appreciation letter. And then it's writing down the things, how I want to be circulating the money. So how I invest and circulate money right now in this moment is I'm doing um, organic nails. I do organic food. I do only natural cosmetics for my hair and my body. I send money to Czech Republic for my mom and my grandma. And, And things go on and on. How am I circulating the money to live a life I want? And then also in the future, how am I intending to invest money to live the dream life? For me, it's I'm buying house for my grandma. I am retiring my mom so she doesn't have to work anymore. We're living in a dream house with the love of my life. And it's truly about seeing what's working now and how you will be investing money in the future. And then we write down the short-term goals and the long-term goals. Short-term goal can be for you a week or a month or three months. And then long-term goal can be three months or six months, 12 months, or your lifetime. But really having the tangible goals. For example, my goal for the next week, it's enrolling two ideal clients for my one-on-one coaching that I just opened two new spots. It's, um, you know, like, inviting six more people to our Bali retreat and really having the tangible goals, writing it down, the numbers, the money, how much it's going to generate. What is it for me? And then long terms, like I said, I'm buying a house for my grandma. I already look at the prices. I already look at the house that I want to be buying. How much is it? Where is it? And really seeing it on the paper. It's everything. And once I finish the journaling, then one more thing. One more thing that I put in my journaling before I finish. It's what triggered me this week and how can I learn from it? It's very important because there will be things that trigger you like unexpected bill or unexpected charge or you wanted to buy something and you forgot your card home or um, a client drop out or whatever it is, like there will be something that triggered you with money, write it down. And how can you learn from it? What is the lesson in it? So really write down what triggered to you. For example, like I got unexpected charge on my credit card and I was overdraft. Okay. How can I learn from this? Well, what can I do? It's check my money daily, check on where my money is going, where is it coming from, and really checking it. Even if there is no movement, start creating the relationship with money on a daily basis. It's going to change everything. It's going to go from anxiety and not wanting to deal with it into I'm open, I'm here for you, let's go create something together kind of relationship. So that's the journaling part. And then I have an Excel spreadsheet where I put all of my income, all of my expenses every single day. That's not such an exciting part for me because I'm more of, you know, the feminine, the flow and, and like doing the planning and, and, and putting it all on the paper can be sometimes overwhelming. 
But the fun part is that clarity really gives you confidence. Clarity gives you power. Knowing where you are and where you're going changes really everything. So I really encourage you to create the money date. Create something, a ritual that it's going to be fun for you. Maybe you will do it on your backyard or by your fireplace, having a hot uh, cacao. I do always cacao ceremony. Um, and my money dates, that's another thing I'm doing. I have cacao ceremony and I have like a beautiful like uh, plate, you know, with, with the snacks and food. So I really make it fun for me. I, I'm really excited about every single week to date with money. And instead of treating money as a booty call, I treat it as, as a fun partner, you know, as, as somebody I want to have in my life every single day. And I wanted to make it work for both of us. So we are both having fun and co-creating things and freedom together. So let me know what ritual you have with money. Take a screenshot and let me know what is your ritual with money and what is the one aha moment? What did you realize in this episode? I would love to hear from you and let's create more money because like Chris Harder always says, when good people make good money, we're achieving great things. And I so wholeheartedly believe in this that let's make more money, more impact together, shall we?